for something to root for. It really just means to cheer for or to support the, a team, um, to cheer and encourage. In this sentence, he was one of those Yankee group, Yankee greats that you rooted for. You're cheering for him, you want him to do well, you're his fan. But, this uh, also an example sentence, my dad and I are rooting for rival basketball teams. So he likes the Lakers, but I like the Celtics, they are rivals. Rooting for. But you can also use this outside of sports. That's, that would be the important thing to remember. You can use this, oh, you are a good example. You are preparing for lots of tests to do the ROTC mm -hmm. because you want to get the officer job or someone wants to get a good job or you want to be the officer. Oh, I'm rooting for you. means mm -hmm. I'm hoping that you do well. I'm rooting, rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. The word originally was for teams, for sports. Root, root, root for the home team. You know that song? It's in that song. Root, root, root for the home team. If they don't lose a thing. Sorry. We don't know. Take that. <laughs> Take that part off. The <laughs> embarrassed. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> You're root for you. I can root it for you. I'm rooting for you. Yeah. Fight through this. Yes. Great example. Yeah. There you go. Number two, the Great Depression. Um, I'm imagining you guys know this one. Um, no? Ari, Ari's saying no. The Great Depression was um, started with, what was the first day of the Black Friday. It was Black Friday, right? Not Black Tuesday? Black uh, Monday. Black Monday? Oh, yeah, gosh. Monday. I was going to say Tuesday. Monday. Not Friday. Black <laughs> Friday. It's <laughs> not <laughs> Friday. <laughs> it's Monday or Tuesday. It's <laughs> Black Monday. Black Monday. You're sure? Yes. Okay. I thought <laughs> it was, I was going to say it's Tuesday. Done. Black Monday. When the stock market <laughs> crashed. And then that was the start of the Great Depression, and that's it for, I'm not sure, it's approximately mm -hmm. 10 years. And I was not alive during this time, so I think <laughs> I cannot... If you weren't alive during the Great Depression, I think there's no way you would truly, truly understand it, because I have a feeling it's one of those things you say you had to be there. You had to be there to truly understand it. From my understanding, it was a really terrible time. Uh, can I quickly ask, did the, the Great Depression, I'm pretty sure I would read in the history books that it started in the U.S. but affected worldwide. Did it come to Korea? Is that known as a rough time for in Korean history? That, that was during, that was before the Japanese came, right? 1920s. 1920. Well, the roaring 20s are when the U.S. was doing fantastic, the Roaring Twenties, we call it. But then, I guess the Great Depression started, I want to say 1927, maybe 1927, until the start of World War II. World War II kicked the economy back into gear. So, 1927 through 1935, let's say. Was that known as being a rough time in Korean? Yeah, it was a clubbing. Oh, they at that time, so of course it was known as a bad time for that reason. Number three, in part, in part to, to give, um, to share. I'm looking for it in the... Um, to impart knowledge in, in our listening. His ability to learn, impart knowledge and just go about his business. That is a good example of how using it, you would use it with the, to impart knowledge, to give knowledge. Another example sentence, I admire him for his desire to impart his skills to younger players. Mm -hmm. So to impart your skills, to impart knowledge, you do not say I impart this can to Arnie, or I give her soda. It's, you don't use for soda and 
physical objects. Uh -huh. You're using it for knowledge, knowledge. or skills, uh -huh. Uh -huh. teaching somebody. Um, it's pretty much the only way I would ever use that word. To impart knowledge. Knowledge, skills, <coughs> um, something like that. Number four, passage of time. Um, this is just an expression, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. As time goes on, in uh, this reading, he became a beloved figure with the passage of time. Um, you could say he became a beloved, a beloved figure as time went on. He became a beloved figure with the passing of ye of many years, the passage of time. That's an easy one. Another example sentence, she blossomed into a grateful ballet dancer with the passage of time. And number five, to go about something. Um, here, in part, his ability to learn, impart knowledge, and just go about his business in a workmanlike manner. It is often used just like that. To go about his business means do not bother other people. You're going, you're, uh, you're just going about your business. We, a very common way to say, say this is if you're starting some story. Uh, the other day, I was just going about my business and a car <laughs> ran into me. Or I was going about my business and some crazy guy attacked me in the street. Or to go, be going about your business means to be doing your normal thing. To uh, be doing stuff as usual. Another example sentence, I can't imagine how famous people go about their lives without the presence of media. Okay, that's another way to use it, to go about their lives, to be doing your life, to be doing your business, to be doing your life, to be going about something. So, go about means just do? Yeah, but again, you can only use it in certain, like... With, with in part, it's skills, knowledge, to be going about your business, to be going about your lives. Mm -hmm. You don't say, I'm uh, doing a project, I'm going about my project, that would really wouldn't work. It's a negative means. No, 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 no. Because it's followed by person without presence of me. Uh, that's just that's just the how the sentence plays out. I can't imagine how famous people go about their lives, how famous people live, mm -hmm. without the presence of media. Yeah. In the um, listening to to go about his business in a workmanlike manner, to go about your business, to go about your lives. Those are two of the really great examples. Going about my own business, that would be the number one. He's going about his business. I was just going about my business and something happened, to go about their lives. Yeah, you can only use it in certain situations. You can't substitute it for do in every situation. Too much focus on his, his work. Too much. In the Yogi Berra example, there, it's a positive thing. He goes about his business in a workmanlike manner. You would hear this about athletes a lot. He goes about his business um, and doesn't bother other people in a workmanlike manner. He works very hard. He doesn't bother other people. He, do, he, he does not goof around. Um, so they're saying that's a positive thing. Is there any <coughs> is there a specific reason why uh, say like this instead of just do do his business or? Just, just live his life. It's just an, an expression we have. Like I said, it, it really means just to do something. Mm -hmm. But you would use it in examples like this. To go about your lives, okay. to go about your business. I'm trying to think of another example. It's always hard to come up with examples. Sure. Yeah. So you can about his job. You can say his job. Oh. Going about his work, his job, his life, his business. Stuff like that. But can we use the, the word business in all kinds of situations? Because he is an athlete and baseball player and 
on the past as I said, go by his fitness and work man like memory. So uh, I feel a little bit awkward. Uh, I understand exactly what you mean. The word business can mean uh, things other than business, like business, um, businessman. A lot of times we say, mind your own business. That's a very common mm -hmm. phrase, mind your own business. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me or don't ask me about what I'm doing. Mind your own business, your own stuff, mm -hmm. your own things. He was going about his business, I mean, his stuff, <laughs> his work, mm -hmm. his business. Uh, it's none of your business. Mm -hmm. Like, it just means, yeah. So we use the word business uh, very, very loosely in, in many different circumstances, mm -hmm. not only mm -hmm. for business business. Mm -hmm.